Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. Um, in the last part we left off after having just validated this uh, sender mail and I explained the header to you. It should make a little bit more sense afterwards, but for now we are just going to uh, leave it with this. Now, we just validated the sender email. And the next thing that we have to validate is the receiving email. As you may have guessed, uh, the emails are actually going to be validated in the exact same, or using the exact same method. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here, and I'm just going to select all of this, and copy it, uh, bring it down a line, and paste this out. And now I'm just going to go through and change uh, the sending to the receiving. So validate receiver email, uh, post receiver, and then for the errors, we want them to make sense. So please enter a valid email address for the receiving contact. Okay, and then we're just going to change again the string length to receiver and say the email you entered for the receiver is too long. Please provide a valid email address. And uh, again, we're going to validate with the receiver. And please provide a valid email address for the receiving contact. Otherwise, we're going to have a to variable. And this to variable is just obviously going to be who you're sending the mail to. Again, we want it in right and left angled brackets and just change that to receiver as well. So like that, we've now validated the first three fields. Last but not least, we're going to um, validate the message body. And so again, our first check on this is going to be if empty, um, and that's the posted body, then our errors will be, oops, don't want that. Um, We're going to just have the error in the errors array. Please enter a message. Nice and simple. And that will be, again, the only validation we do on the body. So we're going to just have else. And like in the other cases, um, we're just going to, not errors, I do that every time. We're not changing the errors array. Um, we're going to set the variable body, and that is going to be equal to um, the HTML entities of the posted body variable. So that's all your validation done. Now, obviously, if something goes wrong, this errors array will be created. Otherwise, it will just be, well, it actually will be non-existent if it doesn't return any errors in this case. So. Um, our next check is going to be to see if the errors array is empty. So again, we're just going to use the empty function, and this time we're going to provide it errors. What this means is that throughout this page thus far, there has been no errors. And so if this is the case, this is where we want to send our mail, or use the mail function. So the function we are using is mail. It's a PHP function, and it requires four parameters, I believe. There may be optional parameters after that, but there's four. Oh, no, there's not, because the optional options come in the header. So four things. The first being who you're sending the mail to. So in this case, it's our two variable, which we have uh, securified. Secured, rather. Securified. That's a great word. Which we had securified with HTML entities and added the angled brackets on either side. Um, the next variable, or the next parameter rather, is subject. So um, we want to have this subject right here. Uh, and this subject comes from the first validation we did where we securified this uh, subject variable using HTML entities after verifying that it was valid. The next one is your body. So we provide body. And 
which is again just right there, um, validated. And the final parameter that it requires is called headers. And these provide all sorts of other options, as I've said. So who's it from, um, if you're copying someone on it, that sort of thing. So all sorts of other email parameters. The only one that we're actually going to be providing is from, which is required. And we're just going to open up braces here and put in email, because it is from our email, which we have gotten from this line right here. And so, I mean, generally what you would do is you'd create a headers variable and you'd say from email address, right? But um, we're just going to be doing it this way and that will work and that will be fun. However, I've just decided that I wanted to change my code a little bit because last time in the demonstrated video, when you did send an email successfully, um, it didn't actually tell you that you had. So I'm just going to copy this down here. Um, and this is just going to avoid other checks. So this this content will all come down. So don't worry being feeling like you wasted your time doing it or whatever. Um, we're just going to open up some PHP tags here and put this all in it. And the reason for this is um, we're actually going to be checking if the errors, empty errors, is equal to false. And if this is the case, then um, we need to echo out the errors, right? So. Just ignore the other part that I've done up there and jumped ahead because I decided to change things. So the way we're going to do it is in an unordered list. So we've checked if and put that there and then closed the PHP and reopened it. So right here is just a blank HTML um, part of the page. So we're just going to open up and close the UL or the unordered list tags. And then in between them we're going to open up PHP again. It's kind of a lot of nesting of PHP, however, it um, provides a really nice effect to do it. And then you're not echoing out this part of the HTML, because echoing out HTML is generally speaking bad practice. So the next thing that we need is a for each loop. Uh, for each loop loops through the elements of an array and um, allows you to do it element by element. I have a tutorial on it in my basics series. If you want to go check that out, you can. But we're going to have for each errors as error, which means that the reference for um, it within this for each loop for each error is going to be error instead of errors, and then the key. Um, hope this is making sense. Just check out the for each tutorial if you are not understanding. Um, so for each of that, we're going to echo out uh, first the list item, li, and then a comma. And because echo can actually um, echo out a comma-separated list of items, so instead of concatenating or providing things like this, we're just going to do it the nice and functional way um, using comma-separated list. So we'll have error in between that comma and then a final comma and closing it again in quotes there. So basically what this is doing is saying if they're empty it is false which means there are errors it opens this up uh, starts a list and then within this list we're going to echo out every one of the errors in the array. Um, down here we have else so that means that it's not false. Next, with this else, we want to make sure that the form has actually been submitted. Otherwise, it will try to mail this each and every time. So, what we're, we're going to do is in this else, sorry, um, we're going to have an is set, and we're just going to check to see if to subject, body, and email are actually um, set. Because if they are, then we can email, and if they aren't, uh, we're just going to let that go down and show the form regularly. Notice that they will only ever be set if there are no errors, So, um, but just because there are no errors does not mean they will be set. For instance, the first load of this page 
they're not going to be set, so this won't be try to happen. Um, and that should be the final code. I will go back to my thing, refresh to check for errors. And there are none. So we'll send this email. You notice how we get these four errors. And now we'll fill it out properly. So we'll enter a subject here, my email, which I'm just going to say admin at slotscripts.com. Receiver's email is root at localhost.com. And this is a test email. Look at how nice the test is. And we are going to, actually, we are not going to do that because the one reason that I changed the coding around was so I couldn't put out a message here. So we're going to mail, and then after we mail, we're going to echo um, message sent, and just simply message sent. Um, so that will only ever be said if the mail is actually sent and I mean we don't actually check to see if it's false but um, yeah really not needing to for the scope of this tutorial so now we are going to send the message and you see we get message sent right here because it's all lovely and we'll hop back into this and repeatedly click get mail until it shows up which it has we open it up this is a test mail look how nice this test is. So the message sent. Uh, so we'll delete that and we'll just go back through this code one more time and uh, relook over things. So the PHP we check to see if it's set all of the post forms that we need um, assuming that it is we go to validate each individual um, field. So with the empty check we're making sure that there actually is a value set. With the string length check, we're making sure it's not longer than this. Filter var, make sure that it's provided with all of the necessary parts of an email address. So that's the at symbol and a dot something or other is what that's really checking for with um, obviously characters in between because this is not a valid email address either. So um, that's what that all checks for. And um, then HTML entities, as we define a variable to a subject or to a, the post value, HTML entities is just a slight bit of security that we put in place for our system. Um, we concatenate on the right and left angled app brackets for multiple email client support. And um, that is all this logic part of the code down here in the actual body we check to see if there are errors set by seeing if it is not empty if that's true we put it out in an ordered lit or an unordered list rather and using it for each statement we loop through all of the errors and put them out in list items um, if there are no errors we check to see if this is set if it is meaning there has been no errors and we have submitted the form we or send the mail um, and let them know that the mail has sent. Otherwise, it's just the form that will be um, submitted. So that is that. Um, and that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to send me a message or to leave a comment. Also. Um, if you have any tutorials that you'd like, uh, feel free to send me a message or again in the comments, suggest something just so I can know what you guys want to see. I was thinking that I'll probably make a tutorial on how to set up Mercury on a local host so that you can be receiving um, emails from your local host in here because so many people struggle with that and they go looking for an SMTP server and all sorts of stuff, but however, using an XAMPP package we can um, do it very easily. I mean, the downside is you're testing in uh, Thunderbird opposed to Gmail, but uh, it's the same thing. This, assuming you're running on a good server, will actually be sending to your um, Hotmail or your Gmail or whatever other email client you use. So uh, that's all, and thanks for watching.